That's one. The message of outreach to unaffiliated Jews is clear to all of us in this room. What about outreach between or among Orthodox denominations? Is that equally important? A personal question to Rabbi Sachs. Um, you have had a very close relationship with Abba Jerebi. What is your favorite story? I am an Iranian Jew who immigrated to the United States after the recent Islamic Revolution. What is your assessment of Jews who are living in third world countries such as Iran? What is the Orthodox, what is the Orthodox Jewish leadership doing to support them and their way of life? And two more. Uh, two more? Yeah. Okay. Um, how do you deal with the concept of chosen nation? I think you said that this means that Jews have more potential, but even how is this justified? And then the last answer, the last, the last question that was texted over here is, excuse me one second. Um, and the last question is, how do we, how do we approach Kiddush Hashem with our children in this generation? The first question. Remember the first question. The first, the first question was, uh, how, if you don't know all of Beit, how can you? If you don't know all of Beit, how can you? We have to see our institutions as a big tent. We're not going to win them over by bringing them in Saturday morning for Dali or Friday night for Dali. It's not. Imagine you and I went into a, a class in Mandarin or Cantonese. We wouldn't even know how to read the book, how to hold the book. If we view our institutions as having 18 to 20 portals of entry, classes in the law firm, classes at the hospital, classes at the cigar bar, you know, learn and burn, you know, yoga, etc. and learning. You name it, things like this. Some of it might be culture, films, etc. We have to see ourselves, our rabbis, not as the rabbis of the poor man's country club, i.e. those who pay dues, but as rabbis of the community. Remember, 80% of Jews in Los Angeles are affiliated with nothing. Okay? And we have to see ourselves, this might be the nucleus, but what happens with this institution, be it Young Israel, North Beverly Hills, be it Beth Jacob, be it any of the other congregations, it's, it's a springboard for engaging the Jewish community around us. And those portals of entry have to be, ultimately, not what happens in this building alone, but I would say 75 to 80 percent in homes, in clubs, etc. Lord, Lord Sachs, do you want to take uh, one or more of the questions on the table? Um, let me take three very quickly. Number one, how do we deal with the issue of chosen people? I thought about this day and night for ten years. Eventually, I came up with a phrase. The dignity of difference. The terror begins with humanity as a whole. Adam and Eve came in angry the generation of the flood people and its builders. And Babel is the world's first empire, the first empire that tries to crush all small identities. And I said, God told Abraham, go and be different, to teach all humanity the dignity of difference. This was a way of speaking about chosen people that you could share with others. I road tested it for two years. Each year, Elaine and I would invite the national leadership of the National Union of Students in Britain. To a we made a reception for them every year because there's so much anti-Israel stuff on British campuses. We wanted the non-Jewish students with us and they have supported us every single year. And I road tested it on them and none of them are Jews and they all loved it. And I could see these Muslims and Sikhs walking out of the room an inch taller saying, we always knew we were different and we thought that was a bad thing. But here's the chief rabbi telling us it's a good thing and it's very nice. And the University of London Union put a plaque, if you go to Gower Street, where the University of London is, the Students' Union, they have placed a plaque just by the front door outside with a quote from my book, The Dignity of Difference, saying, because we are all different, we each have something unique to contribute. So we took chosen people and said, guys, you share that. Each people is chosen in its way, and we know we are but we believe that each person is chosen, each group is chosen for something, and everyone loved it. The second thing is 
uh, and Baba Jirava. I was here staying with my late aunt, Alana Shalom, at 68, when the phone call came through that the, the Baba Jirava could see me. This was Sunday night, and, and the message was, you could see me for your kibbutz Thursday evening. Now, I had no money. I just had a Greyhound bus ticket. You know how long it takes to travel from here to 770 on a Greyhound bus. <laughs> so it takes a long time. I traveled non-stop for 72 hours on a Greyhound bus. And I came and I was about to go into my first Yechidus uh, with the Rebbe. And people outside, because there was a little bit of waiting, told me a story. And I shared this with you, because it's a story for our time. Somebody wrote to the Rebbe the following letter. It said, I need the rubber's help. I'm very depressed. I don't see meaning in life. I never feel happy. I do mitzvahs and I don't feel moved by them. I doubt them, but nothing happens to me. I need the rubber's help. And the rubber gave the most brilliant reply without writing a single word. He simply read the first word in every sentence. What was the first word? I. If you want happiness, stop thinking about I. And in a generation of the iPad, the iPod, and the iPhone, that's not a bad thing to do. That was the moment you were. And finally, what do you do with people who can't read an olive face? Let me tell you this. When we started really building Jewish day schools like crazy, we did what Rabbi Wallace mentioned even here. We were raising a generation of Jewish kids who knew more than their parents. And the kids were coming back, reading all of the bases, talking Divrei Torah. And all of a sudden, the parents realized, I can't read an of bases. So when we, we created a program, the crash course in Hebrew reading, it started immediately after, uh, after the Chagim, and it finished before Hanukkah, and we said, you will be reading Hebrew by Hanukkah and it won't take a miracle. We ran it in 32 centers in Britain, a thousand people a year for three years. 3,000 adults who couldn't read an of place and found themselves able to get, read an of place. And I cannot tell you how moving it was, because each year we did a ceremony for it. And they were getting up one after the other, saying, you know, for the first time, we can light Hanukkah candles and I can make the bracha. My children used to have to make the bracha for me, and now I can read the bracha. I cannot tell you what a mitzvah it is to have children who teach their parents, and in that way, they bring their parents with them, the kids make the parents more religious, and the parents learn an art of base. And I think at such times, even a Kodesh Baruch who sits there shedding tears of nachas to see how Hebrew is coming back into Jewish life. And now, very